All right, guys, I'm gonna do a quick walk around of this back half we just did. Just a quick explanation. Uh, this truck belongs to our buddy Derek, and he decided to build the rear back half before he built up the front suspension. Uh, you know, a little opposite of what a lot of people do, but at the same time, it's really a cool look. Um, so you kind of get a little bit of that instant gratification of, hey, I spent some money and now my truck looks different versus a long travel kit in the front. Other than the fiberglass and wider track width doesn't really look a whole bunch different. So anyways, um, we decided to go with two inch DOM 120 wall tubing and 3.0 by 16 inch travel King shocks. We put the uh, Camberg billet shock mounts at the top. King 2.5 by 2.5 air bumps. This setup has exactly eight inches above travel. Uh, just got done measuring it. I'll post a picture later. But with a 16 inch travel shock, it's pretty ideal to have your ride height right at about 50% of your overall travel. So when you hit bumps, you've got plenty of up travel for the piston inside that shock to do what it's supposed to do with all these bypass tubes before it gets to its bump zone and things get stiff. Uh, people can argue about that all day long if they want, but that's what works out for me. Uh, we built this tire cage in the back for 37s, so if you think these 35s are a little sunk down in there, they are. 37s sit actually substantially taller than 35s. These things really sunk in. So he does plan on running 37s on this truck. It does look probably better with the 37s in there. I'm not going to lie. These 35s even hang down kind of low. Um, but like I said, we wanted to build it for the end result reasons. Um, which at some day might be a short course link, uh, which based on my math, we actually still might be able to use these mounts. Or even if you just did a spring under, I think we can still use these mounts and still get, you know, a solid uh, 19 inches of travel maybe with some 18 inch shocks. Uh, decided to go with dual coolers. Maybe doesn't necessarily need them right now, but uh, again, it was one of those things where planning for the future, it's got all dash eight lines mounted as traction boards. Our fancy little bolt system we did on there. Um, this is his handle for the jack. Easy access, easy to get to. Jack extension. Harbor Freight Jack with the TE Designs mount. Derek's still gonna do some of the finish up uh, wiring, you know, for like the license plate. Jacqueline hanger. So, uh, even if he does decide to fully cage this truck someday, definitely be able to come out of it. You can see where I put a little circle. That's where we exit when we build our cages, bring it down and easily tie it in. And same through here. Cage would pass through into the cab there. We got uh, 17 inches of travel out of these 16s. It is like you can tell, it's bumped and strapped here. There's the Cartex straps. Um, performance wise, this is actually the same performance as any standard bed cage you see with somebody with a stock bed. Uh, a lot of the trucks that we build have this same geometry, same setup. Um, this one just looks way cooler because it's a full two back half. Um, and probably a lot more room to grow with this setup. So any questions, feel free to ask them below. Send me a message. Make sure to check out our website. 
Also, if you could uh, sub subscribe and like this video, we'd appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks for watching.